So I wrote a, a book called WTF, yeah. Willing to Fail. Yes. And I don't think I started a path of being willing to fail. Yeah. But I learned when I wrote my first book and we didn't have a title. Yeah. When we closed the manuscript, I'm like, wow, I've succeeded and then failed. Succeeded and failed, succeeded and failed. And it always took me to a bigger, better place. And I was like, wow, what a gift failure has been for me. So I started to embrace the failures. So many times that I failed to the point where we almost lost the business. My favorite failure was five years into the business. I had 11 employees. We had a private office. I heard you when I was in the yes. back there saying I don't have a private office. I did then. And I remember working in my private office and hiding in my private office because I didn't like the people I worked with. Mm. I'm a social guy, I like having fun, I like pranking and joking around. Yes. And these people I worked with, I just didn't enjoy. Wow. They weren't optimists, they were glass half full type people. Mm. So I decided I wasn't having fun in my business five years in, what am I gonna do about it? And I ripped off the Band-Aid. I brought in all 11 people in one morning meeting and I said, I'm sorry. I started with two powerful words and I just said, I'm sorry, I've let you down. I haven't found the right people, treated you right, given you the love and support that you need to be successful. I made a mistake. I don't know how else to fix it, but to start again. Mm. I had two people that might have been salvageable, but I didn't know. Mm. Wiped out the team, apologized, they left, and I started with uh, wow. running a truck by myself. Wow. We went from five trucks down to just one, mm. but I slowly rebuilt That's the team. That's what the first five years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and so I, you know, I had to call customers and tell them, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is what I did. Yeah. And it was a challenge, but I learned that day, it's all about people, finding the right people and treating them right. Yes. And no company in the world grows sustainably without taking care of their people. And we call it our strategic formula for growth. First, take care of your people, then they will take care of the customer. Mm -hmm. If you take care of the customer, they'll take care of uh, growth of your brand, profit, your profits, else, yeah. your reputation, everything. Yeah. And so most people say, oh, the customer's always right. It all starts with the customer. I completely disagree. It all starts with your people. Yeah. Because you go into any brand that anyone likes. I happen to be a big fan of Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I'm in Tulsa or tomorrow I'm going to be in like Washington, D.C. like to work in Starbucks, DC. right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, when, when I go into Starbucks, they, they greet you friend, in a friendly way. Yeah. If they get your drink right, if they get it wrong, they fix it. They give you a coupon for a free drink next time. Yeah. They just know how to take care of people because they have been taken care of by the Starbucks leadership. Yeah. They don't get it right all the time. They're not perfect. They've got problems. But if you, anyone that has a business starts by taking care of your people, I think the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. When I took my second COO that I hired and got wrong, so we had Cameron Harold, two million to 106 million. I was the best man in his wedding, great friends still to this day, thankfully. But I realized I didn't have the person that could take it beyond 100 million. In fact, he wasn't really the right person to take us beyond 50 million. Mm -hmm. And things started to break, fall apart. So I got him out of the business. He wasn't happy at the time, but again, we're, we're friends now and it was a tough move. The, the right decision is seldom the easy one. Yeah. So I had to make that right Because he felt like decision. he was the one who helped grow yeah. from that and, to and that. and he right? was hurt, but he launched a great career in yeah, speaking yes. and books yes. and he's written yes. way more books than yes. I have. And so I then said, okay, who's my next COO? And I thought I hit the jackpot. I told you I love Starbucks. I recruited an ex-president of Starbucks away from Starbucks. She was from Canada and wanted to relocate and move back to Canada. Sounds I'm perfect. Like, and she wanted to take a pay cut of half yeah. because she really wanted to be back home and wanted to be part of a cause. She's a great person, mm. but 14 months into that relationship, I realized she was the wrong person for me. I did so many interviews with COOs in airports. Yeah. I'd fly to city to city to city and meet with people. Yeah. And what I did differently this time is I took a sheet of paper and I drew a line down the middle and I said, what are all the things in my business or a growing company that you need to do well, yeah. that you need to love to do? Yeah. What are the things that I love to do that I'm good at in the business? Yeah. What are the things I'm bad at but the business still needs and I might hate to do? And I needed somebody that could still do all these things, yeah. a yin and yang type setup. Yeah. And so I started looking and I created this little vision, this painted picture describing this person, hmm. who they were, didn't know where to <laughs> it, find it's them. It's almost like finding the perfect like wife, spouse. well, yeah, spouse, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So literally in the same way that you might 
paint a picture of your spouse. Yeah. I mean, everything that they enjoy to do, their personality, yeah. what they're good at, what they're bad so at. So you have a vision for this right-hand person. person. Yeah, that's your... I shared it out through email to my networks, through LinkedIn and so on. And I had three different people in different parts of the country, completely unrelated, that said, you just described Eric Church. All three of them. Because they saw that there's only one person that these people each knew. They didn't say, hey, here's five people you should go look at. Here's some names one to go talk to. They yeah. said, you just described Eric Church. You're so clear what you're looking for. The only person I know that fits that vision is Eric. Mm. I reached out to Eric. He was gainfully employed. He was a president of a really large growing organization. And he said to me, he goes, it's so weird you called. He goes, I happened to know someone who was a part of 1-800-GOT-JUNK and my wife and I were walking along the beach and my wife says, so what's next? What do you want to do in your career? He goes, I want to run a company like 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Mm. And so call it serendipity, whatever it is, but I think I was so clear on vision. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it when I found it. Mm -hmm. And so Eric's been around 11 years. Yes. Our revenue is eightfold from where, when he came in. Yeah. Um, We've never had a, a, a fight. We, we disagree, but we just work. What, what I noticed about him that he never knew, and this is again where it's the right person for me, he had always worked with an entrepreneur. Mm. He understood their quirks, mm -hmm. right? I mean, entrepreneurs are a little So you're little the visionary, strange. he's the perfect integrator for you, right? Yeah. I'm the visionary, he's the integrator, and there's yeah. a book called Rocket Fuel that yeah, talks yeah, about that. Yeah. We got this book and, and Eric, looks at this and he's like, this is us. Uh, yeah. He goes, did we write this? Like, it's literally how we operate. Mm. And I think that every great leader in a business needs help. Yeah. You don't have to be a CEO or a president, but even a leader in an organization, who does the stuff that you hate doing that you don't want to do? Marcus Buckingham says, first play to your strengths. Yeah. I ignore the weaknesses. And I just sit there and go, hey, I'm not good at that. Let's find someone who can be. Mm. And that's what really propels the company forward. How do you work with your integrator? Like, what do you do kind of day to day? What, mm. what, does, what does he do? We had 600 people in between our two offices. Yeah. And every Monday, I would go work in a coffee shop. Yeah. And I'd basically work in a coffee shop because I wanted the buzz and the noise and the energy, but I didn't want anyone who knew me who would distract me. Yeah. In my own office, in an open office environment, someone comes up and goes, hey, Brian, I got a question. Or, hey, Brian, how's your, how's your weekend? Monday was just focus, 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 boom, in a coffee shop. Focus work, yeah. And I would move coffee shops if I needed a change in, in energy. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, back to back, meetings nonstop. And then Fridays would be, and still are today, my free day, my day to hang with my kids, yes. go skiing, go for a bike ride, work on my health, read a good book. Yeah, I don't do that. Uh, you know, hang out and just enjoy life uh -huh. and work hard, play hard. Yeah. I've got those four days where I'm just slammed, but then I take time away. And so we've even tried to enforce, as you and I've talked about this, mm. uh, a policy in our business called going dark. Yeah. When I'm away on vacation, and that we expect all our people to do this, we give five weeks paid vacation to our people. When they are away from the business, turn off your email, turn off your social media if you like, but disconnect from business so you can recharge with your friends, your family, your relationships. Mm. Glad you like that. Yeah, <laughs> because when I was uh, asking you about your your work week, I was shocked because mm -hmm. I thought to run a company that big, that's just my identity, right? I thought you gotta, you must be six, seven days a week, yeah. you know, ten hours a day, and 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 you when you share with Mo, no, uh, Monday I do this, I go to the office, mm -hmm. and and Friday is my free day, I don't do that. Weekends mm -hmm. usually you don't work. But. It's a slippery slope that once you you do start going, oh, well, it's just one Friday, ah, uh, it's another Friday. Mm -hmm. My my assistant used to say, so like, what if the 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 uh, the office burns down? I'm like, call nine one one, call the fire department. <laughs> like, what am I actually going to do? She's like, well, wouldn't you like to know about that? Which was a fair question. Yeah. I said, as long as Eric knows about it, yeah. I'm okay. Mm. And so I have not in, I don't know, 11 years since Eric's been around, had him bother me on vacation to say, oh my gosh, this thing just happened. Mm. And I get to do the same for him. And, mm. and, and I know that he runs the day to day. He does a lot of the hiring. He does all the operation. But there's a lot of trust that you place on Eric, right? Yeah, he's got a 14 person, person leadership team. Yeah. I'm a part of the team, but it's not my team. Yeah. Now, am I lucky? It, it fits with my discipline of how I've set it up where I don't, I'm not good at that. Mm. Don't give me these balls to drop. Give them to someone who's really good at juggling, 
completing things, getting, so you ask, you know, again on roles, I'm the vision guy. Yeah. You know, the only reason I wrote a book yes. was because Roy H. Williams, my co-author of The Wizard of Ads, he yeah. does all our radio creative, he said to me, Brian, you gotta write a book. And he said it every year, we'd go visit him in Austin, Texas. Eight years in a row, he got to write a book. And I'm like, Roy, I don't want to write a book. I'm not an entrepreneur that needs it for my ego. Um, I don't have the time. I, there's just no reason. Yeah. And he said, but this isn't about you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you have stories to share yes. in your business the way you have all created what you've created that others need to hear it. And he said, I promise you, if you write a book, you will see the impact to the point that you'll want to write a second book mm. and a third. And Unfortunately, he was right, because it does take time. Because <laughs> you thought, one, one there's no way, one, I'm done, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I was asking Brian, like, Brian, what's, why are you holding a banana? And he said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? It's fun, right? I mean, what I think it represents is my belief in the business of take your business seriously, but not yourself. Yes, yes. And yeah, very uh, true. just having fun. Very true. And if you take your business too darn seriously, then um, I think you can, you can run into problems. You gotta cut people some slack. Like our values of passion, integrity, professionalism, and empathy. Empathy is a value where we allow our people to make mistakes and have a WTF attitude. We want people to fail, not repeat those failures. Yes. And we want people to loosen up and have fun. Like when someone messes up, don't just, like, why, why did you not do that? Ask them some questions. Ask them, what did you learn?